I know you're friends with uh, Anthony Magnabosco, is that right? Who's who goes mm -hmm. out in the street and does the uh, street epistemology. I mean, so is, it, is there he anything you, any projects with him, or do you just generally get advice? No, about he, you know he 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 kind of does his thing. Um, the the street stuff. It's uh, it's very interesting to watch. Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily anything that I could do. What I've done primarily is um, gone into churches, sort of as a um, you, you might say as a tourist of sorts, you might say as kind of an anthropologist of sorts, perhaps. Uh, I kind of call it church spotting because uh, I'm, I'm not exactly there uh, to just sort of take stock, but, but I am actually like listening to, to hear what people have to say. And um, it's been quite disappointing, not to, not to give away <laughs> <laughs> much of much of my talk later, um, but it's it's been a thoroughly disappointing experience. Uh, I have to say, looking back over the past ten years, there has not been a single congregation um, that has moved me to to reconsider. Um, it's rare, in fact, that I find congregations where I look around and say, "Well, these people say what you like about them, but they are definitely Christians." So that's that's the the big area of skepticism that I have is that these people are actually Christians. Um, and it's funny because I, I talk with Christians um, somewhat regularly, uh, some some that are friends of mine, and they sort of, when I tell them that, they sort of shake their heads and say, yeah, you know, honestly, I, I go to church too, and I wonder, you know, what in the world are these people even doing here? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a very, very different thing from when you actually go to a service and you see everything being done and everyone's really happy, everyone's excited, everyone's, you know, oh, it's so great to see you again. Um, but what I found is that it's a, it's a very, very superficial level of an experience. And once you dig down a little bit deeper, uh, you yeah. find absolutely nothing. Um, I, one of the questions that I regularly pose to people when I visit is, um, so why are you here? Like, why are you at this church as opposed to maybe another church? And, uh, I always get one of two answers, sometimes both. Uh, well, the people here are just so nice, they say. And I, <laughs> I'm wondering, okay, were you expecting something different? Like, were you, were you coming here expecting people to be nasty and mean all the time? Yeah, I think most churches are full of very nice people. Right. And if, you, if, they, if they were, would you tell me about it? Would you brag about it? Um, and number two, they say, well, and the, and the pastor here, he really teaches from the Bible. And, uh, and that's telling for two reasons. Number one, that that seems to be a shock to them that they would find a church where the pastor actually teaches from the Bible. Uh, and number two, it, it also tells me that they think that all the other churches out there, the ones that they're not going to have pastors that don't teach from the Bible or that's a rare thing to find. And that's why they've, they've sort of glommed onto that. Including the one across the street. Yeah. Including the one across the street. <laughs> right. And then I go to the one across the street and they say the same thing about the church that I went to before. And it's, you know, and you would never, really realize that if you're staying inside that particular bubble, which is kind of what they do, right? And so I travel from bubble to bubble and, and I see how how they're sort of replicating their assumptions about everyone else. And you know, once you once you see it from the outside, it's kind of like seeing the sausage being made. You know, you can't not <laughs> not be aware of of that. Yeah. So um that's that's not to say that I haven't met uh, some really fantastic uh, believers, and and I count some of them as some of my good friends. However, um, and this is this is all I'll say about that. I found that they are the exception rather than the rule, and my okay. my optimism was uh, was that they would be more of the rule instead. Zach, as you said, you're a 
you're humanist, a free mm -hmm. thinker. You're on the board of the Fellowship of Free Thought in Dallas, and we're on mm -hmm. the board of the Foundation Beyond Belief. Texas is a huge state known for its outspoken evangelical Christians. So what is it like being an atheist in Texas? I, I imagine it's probably quite a lot like being a creationist in England, <laughs> you know, um, or, a, or a, a very... Um, uh, a very strong evangelical Christian or, or pro-life activist in England or something like that. We're, we're sort of culturally mirror images of each other, uh, England and Texas in a lot of ways. <clears throat> but it's, um, it's, it's been a, a bit of a challenge, uh, but I think mostly psychologically, right? So a lot of people have this assumption about Texas, that Texas is just this totally crazy, nutso place where all sorts of weird things happen, and that is true. However, in fact, I, I understand that in Norway, um, slang for uh, like something that's crazy is actually Texas. So in Norway, if you want to say, is that so crazy, you say, oh, that's so Texas. Interesting. Anyway. <laughs> So Texas is nuts um, in a lot of ways. It's very, very weird. It has a very um, weird history. It's the only state in the United States that was a sovereign nation uh, on its own, uh, which is, so I understand the argument as to why the Texas state flag is, is flown at the same height as the American flag. You see that uh, very commonly here in Texas. Every other state, you'll have a pole, a uh, flagpole, and there'll be an American flag and then the state flag underneath it. But in Texas, you fly two poles, <laughs> one for the American flag and one for the Texas flag. And they wow. take that very seriously here. You know, it's a very interesting state, but at the same time, um, there's a lot of room for individual expression. And uh, one of the things, one of the stories, Texas stories that I thought was really cool when I, um, when I first came here and started looking into the history was the story of um, Maverick, the, the rancher, where we get the term Maverick. And uh, the, the way it worked was, so you, you, Texas was, before it was an oil state, it was a cattle state. And so the way that you uh, identified your cattle was you put a brand on them, right? Kind of like in England, they put these uh, colored spots on the sheep, right? To, to right, tell yeah. one sheep from the other. Uh, in Texas, you brand them, you, you know, the, the fiery brand. And, and they have different shapes. And that's how you, did, you tell one, one cow from another or one herd from another. Um, well, Maverick took up the practice of just not branding his cows. And he said, well, that's my brand is no brand. And that played to his advantage because any cow that was found that didn't have a brand on it for any other reason, he would say, ah, that's my cow. So he was able to snap up some extra cows that way. Increase the herd. Yeah. Increase the herd. <laughs> and so he was, he was a Texan who refused to be branded. And, uh, you know, in that respect, I think myself and, and other uh, atheists in Texas kind of refuse to be branded as well. Um, it's interesting. So you, what you find here is, uh, of course, Texas is a growing state. It's a growing economy. Uh, Dallas, Houston, uh, Austin, for sure, even San Antonio are, are all growing cities. And uh, they're drawing in population from the rest of the country. So my, myself, I'm from Ohio. I'm from, quote unquote, the north. Mm -hmm. I'm a Yankee. As they say down here, even though my wife, who's from Michigan, insists I'm I'm from the South, um, but so you've got all these people coming in from the northern states and 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 the West Coast uh, and the East Coast and places that typically these days religion isn't a huge deal. Yeah, and they're coming into places like like Dallas and and, and Fort Worth and Houston, where uh, admittedly in the cities. Uh, the, in the cities themselves, religion is becoming less and less and less of a deal. Uh, it's 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 still growing and it's still active in the suburbs very strongly. Um, that's where you find the biggest mega churches around here, um, and to to be sure, out in the rural areas rural as well. Areas. Yeah. yeah. Um, Same but so you, but so those uh, those groups still have quite a bit of money. And they're funding the, the mega churches, and they're they're putting up billboards, and they can afford to put up billboards in downtown Dallas. So you go to downtown Dallas, where you know the religiosity is very very low, and you've got the people from outside the city putting up billboards that say, you know, you're going to hell if you if you don't accept Christ. And people from the north have never seen this before, and they think to my they think to themselves, what in the world is going on here? Why okay. you know why? <laughs> 
why why is bar people spending money on a billboard like this there's also uh kind of a social convention i suppose that um fitting into the social fabric here kind of requires church membership even if you don't really believe it's it's sort of an expected thing that you would just be a part of it oh yeah this idea of so what church do you go what to? church do you go yeah. to yeah and um i think that is kind of slowing down because uh over the past five years or so and i live out in the suburbs i live out in trump country for sure um but over the last five six seven years uh the number of people that I've met that just don't care about church and don't go to church, even out here in the suburbs, has been growing. And I'm I'm watching that phenomenon with some interest because uh, if if that is starting to happen in the suburbs, even uh, that mm -hmm. that that uh, that bears uh, that will bear some interesting fruit uh, for the American church in the near future. Might be something uh, you want to keep an eye on and press blog about. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm I'm definitely watching that, and I've you know one example for uh, just down the street from us actually. So again, we live in Trump Country. You know, this is very capital R, capital S, capital T, red state Texas. Um, hats. Well, you know, I, I it's so <laughs> red that you don't even you see mag mega hats where people are feel. Um, like they need to get that message out. I don't think anybody around here feels like they need to because everyone's kind of the same. Um, but just down the street from us, there's a, a fairly large church that uh, they bought when they first built the church. They had a whole big plot of land. I mean, it's Texas; you can buy a lot of land, and they uh, they used to have like fairs and you know festivals and stuff on the on the extra land. They put build the church on one side, but they had five times more land on the other side that they were always planning on expanding into. And they just recently sold it in the past year, they sold it and they're going to build houses on it, which means that the number of people that are becoming members there is either holding steady or slowly going down. Now it's, it's a very smart thing for them to do as an organization, right? So if they have, if they know that they're not going to grow, um, they can sell this land, use the money, pay down whatever debts they might have and be financially solvent for the next, you know, five to 10 years or so. But the way a church works, a church doesn't actually generate anything of, of value aside from, you know, what people feel that they get from it in order to participate. And so if the number of people that come to church continues to dwindle or stay as it is even, uh, then that church may in fact close. And that's happening in red state, Texas. I mean, you know, you go to, to London or Dublin and you can walk down the street and you can see abandoned churches, you know, for sale left and right. Right. That's, that's become sort of normal now that's um, true. over there. That is not normal here, but I can, I can sort of see the writing on the wall where, okay, if this is happening now where churches are not, if they're not growing, then they're shrinking. Then, uh, and, and we know that there's a demographic sea change coming because the kids of the people that are going to church now are uh, less than half of them are going to want to go to church when they're older. That is not sustainable demographically. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just sort of watching and waiting. And, you know, so it's, it's to the answer to your question, um, it, it was difficult. In, in Texas to be an atheist uh, at a certain point in time, that was definitely true. It is still something that's a little bit embarrassing. Maybe you wouldn't go to the PTA meeting and start talking about it. Um, but you could also go to the PTA meeting and find some other atheists there <laughs> yeah. and, and meet them for coffee later. So eh, I'll take it. <laughs>